your spirit would just fill this place and fill our hearts, Lord, as we worship you, as we enter into your presence, Lord. I pray that you would be blessed by it, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name.
with your joy, with your peace, and with your presence in Jesus' name.
that first verse back up on the screen. And I just want to take a moment before we, before we move on from this song. The first verse says, higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. And in death, in life, I'm confident in the power of your great love. Think about what it is that we're singing. These aren't just some foo-foo churchy words. There's so much truth to that, and it can be so easy to come into, into times like this and, and just sing the songs but not really take a moment to think about what it is that we're proclaiming that God's love is higher than any mountain that we can face, stronger than the power of the grave. It is constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. So I want to sing that again, um, starting with in death and life. And just let it be a reminder. Not only are we proclaiming it to give God praise, but let it be a reminder to your own souls this morning, no matter whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing in your life right now, in your current circumstances, God's love, God's power is bigger than any mountain. It is stronger than the power of the grave. Amen. Sing it out in death and life. Bones to live, call these lungs to sing once. 
people who had real needs. So I know in the room there are people with real needs. Uh, we're talking about, you know, we've got family lost in addiction or we've got uh, family who's walked away. We've got family who's been taken from us too early for reasons that we cannot explain. There are real things in our life that we face and we sing this song that says, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. And you can, you can, you can, um, you can see this at work in your family. There is darkness, perhaps, maybe not in all of your lives, but in some of your lives, you can see the hands of darkness that, that overtake and we sing this song it's not just pretty words we sing on a sunday but there's power because jesus is the savior jesus is the healer jesus is the redeemer and so father we thank you 
Lord, that you are so, so good to us, that your love is unfailing, and your name, Jesus, makes the darkness tremble. Father, I pray that your spirit would rise up inside of us, Lord, to fight and to proclaim. Your light would shine in the darkness. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise, and I do say, Father, shine your light in the dark places. Illuminate the darkness that surround us. Father, let us be light. Let us be love. Let us be uh, life to those around us. May the darkness tremble when we come in. May the darkness tremble as we begin to proclaim and to lift up your name. Father, we pray for freedom from addiction. We pray for freedom uh, from, from things and chains that would, that would hold us in bondage. Father, we thank you for your love and your peace that would overwhelm and overshadow those who have lost loved ones. In the name of Jesus, may your spirit come and minister to us. Lord, that you would be real to us. You would be real among us. You would be real in us and within us. Lord, this isn't a show. This isn't something that we just do. But you are real. You are powerful. You are love and you are light. And you have a purpose and a plan for your church, which is us, your people. Father, be glorified, be praised this morning. Come, enter our hearts and minister to us. Speak to us. Father, may faith and hope rise up within us in boldness to declare your word and to see your kingdom and your purpose accomplished in our lives. We give you all the praise. Church, give the Lord praise this morning. Thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Well, welcome to Lifeline Community Church. Go ahead and uh, go find your seats. Uh, be seated. We're so glad to have you here with us. If this is one of your first or second times here, we just, we welcome you. We welcome you with us. Uh, and we'd love to connect with you. We think that the easiest way uh, for that to happen is for you to go ahead and there's a connection card located on the pocket of the chair in front of you. You can take out that connection card. You can fill it out and you bring it to the Life Center after our gathering is over and we'll hook you up with a free t-shirt. So, I mean, how's that for being a guest? It's great. Um, so there's that. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings. Uh, there are several ways that, that we do that here. At Lifeline, I need you guys to know that this isn't an entrance fee or a cover charge. We really don't want your money. Please don't be under any pressure or obligation to give. This is simply a response to the Lord. We do believe that uh, the Lord says to bring the, the tithe, that first 10%, to his kingdom for his glory, and he'll be faithful to provide everything that we need. So this is simply uh, an opportunity to respond to that. There are several ways that can happen. There's a giving box located on the back wall. The ushers are making their way by. Uh, you can give online at lifelinelodi.com, and you can also text uh, any amount to the number on the screen is also in your bulletin. Uh, Lifeline, we have a family center, a family room here. So we absolutely welcome kids of all ages in our main service, in our main gathering. We, we love that. And uh, something powerful happens when kids experience adults worshiping Jesus. You know, their eyes are open and they begin to see uh, the reality of who God is. And so we welcome that. Uh, we do have a family room, though. If, if for some reason you need to change the pace, it's not working out for you uh, just right, then please join us in the family room. Uh, there are comfy couches uh, in there and the service is live streaming so you don't have to miss anything and you can still enjoy that with your family. Uh, growth track is happening right after uh, our second service today at 1230. So growth track, uh, that's how you connect with us and we connect with you on a deeper level. If you want to find out more about who we are, uh, we want to find out more about who you are. We want to help you develop your gifts and your strength and, and release you into everything that God uh, has for you. Join the dream team. All that stuff happens in the growth track and it's so much fun. So that's happening today at 12. 30. Uh, today is at 201, step two, discover who you are. That's great. So come and discover who you are with us today at 1230. Uh, that'll be really fun. And I have to just plug right now, there's a pancake breakfast happening uh, right after service today. For all the mo moms in the room, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All you men are like, that's not you. But yeah, <laughs> there's a Mother's Day uh, pancake breakfast. So stay for that. Uh, and at this time, I want you to turn your attention to the screen as we're going to enjoy a short video. Come on, give it up for our media team that puts all that cool stuff together. I just love it. All right. Come on up here. Clap down Nathaniel Leonardini, one of our faithful men of God right here. I just want to pray over this offering really. 
That's right. Come on, man. Look at this guy. Hey, what you preaching on this morning? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing around. All right. I want to pray over this offering and, and pray that God would stretch it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lift this offering up to you. Every dollar that it would have the power of a hundred. Lord, we just pray right now for a hundredfold what was given, that it would be sown back into the community to start recovery centers, start new campuses, release people to do the work of the ministry, Lord. And I pray a blessing over those who gave as well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Come on. Let's give it up for this man right here. Right? He's like running down the middle aisle like, yeah, <laughs> high five me, everybody. I just love it. My name is Elliot Jones. Uh, Tiffany and uh, I, my wife Tiffany, have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. We are the church. We are this group of people. If this is your first or second time here, we are just so glad you're here. It, it's really a, an honor and a privilege for us, and we have an exciting message for you today. I really hope you're excited to hear this because God wants to speak a message of hope, encouragement, and love into your life today. Now, if you believe that, say amen with me. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Now, as we're getting started, I want you to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. They'll, it'll be up on the screen for you later, and we're going to even read a scripture before we get there. But take your time there. Uh, you can get it on your iPhone. You can get it on your Android device. Um, and we have, a little, we have a little cool thing where you can get on the YouVersion Bible app and you can follow along with the notes and uh, the, some, of the, some of the scriptures and the notes that we have for you. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So first, what I, want to, what I want to start this day off with is I believe, I believe for too long, for too long, Stress and anxiety, and fear, and this feeling of lack has plagued believers for too long, for absolutely too long, and I want it to end. I want it to end today. I want to get to the root of this issue. I want to get to the root. I don't want to just chop the leaves down. Man, we got things going on in our life. We don't want to chop at the, at the leaves. We want, to, we want to get to the roots. I want to take you to the roots today of what I believe those issues grow from, grow from, okay? But before I go any further, I just want to say, we love you, moms. We love you, moms. And I think my mom might be watching online right now, so mom, I love you. I thank you for everything that you've done for me throughout my whole life. You believed in me when no one else did, and I love you for that. And I just want to say thank you to all the ladies in here because it takes more than a pregnancy to be a mother. And so I just want to say thank you to all you ladies out here and what you bring, that love, that kindness, that encouragement, that somehow only you can bring. Can we give it up for all the... You can do way better than that. Come on. Amen. 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 Love you, Mom. Okay, so let's get started. I want to get to the root of these issues, and I believe most of the roots that we can address are found right here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Pierced themselves with many sorrows. See, this is what I want to tell you about, about money. See, money has this, has this weird effect on us. But what I want to tell you about money and material wealth is it's a lot like this brick. Everybody see, this is a, this is a brick, okay? I'm not going to, you know, take it easy, take it easy. I love you. I would never do that, okay? So wealth and money is like this brick. See, this brick in and of itself is neither holy nor evil. It's just a brick, y'all. Okay, I can use this brick to start building a hospital. I can use this, thank you, I can use this brick to start building another church. I love that one. Yeah, she wants to build the church. I like that. I could also use this brick to uh, smash out a window in a church. But see, this brick by itself does, is not evil. It's not holy. It's what we do with the brick that makes it a tool for either good or evil. Your money, money that we find. See, it's not money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money that makes us strive, that makes us, what we're going to talk about today, a little discontent, no matter how much or how little we have. See, 
I, I, gotta, I gotta be honest with you today. I, I hate running out of stuff. It's just, it's just the way I'm wired. Maybe you feel the same way. I hate running out of stuff. See, I, I, I get two pieces of bread out of the cupboard, and I get some strawberry jelly, y'all, and I rub it all over those two pieces of bread, and I'm like, mm, 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 mm. and I get into the cupboard, and I grab that bottle of Jif out, and I open her up, and there's nothing in there. How does that make me feel? How does that make you feel? I got one. You got that box of life cereal right there. Come on, can I get an amen for some life cereal? Not just any bowl of life cereal. I'm talking the last bowl of life cereal in the box, you know, the one with all the sugar at the bottom. Yeah, I'm getting hungry right now. I'm so glad there's a pancake breakfast outside because I'm, mm, and I pour it in there and it's the last pour, right? And it's, it's all the crumbs. Mm, that bite is my favorite. I get, I'm getting a little carried away in this illustration right now. And then I open the refrigerator, and there ain't no milk. <laughs> come on. Come on, somebody. Put some creamer and some water together. Can I get an amen? There's like one or two holy people in the house that are willing. Because wasting that, I mean, that is the root of all evil right there. Just last night, just last night, we had some, we had breakfast. We had breakfast for dinner last night. And Tiffany's in there. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know she was an awesome cook when we got married. Actually, I don't think, I don't think she did a lot of cooking when we got, before we got married. But we got married and uh, praise the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. She just stepped into that because I was ready to be content with some canned chili, put it in some macaroni and cheese. And that's like, that's a two-course meal in one kind of thing or some chopped ramen with some chili in it. I'm a mess Come on, Mother's Day, and I'm making y'all moms go, that's so much sodium. Oh, my gosh. I know, I know, I know, I know. So, so Tiffany's in the kitchen. She's making breakfast, uh, breakfast for dinner, and I'm, I'm sitting there being a bump on the log. It's Mother's Day, and, she, and it's the next day, and she's making dinner anyway. I'm just thinking about that now, of course. And I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm watching some YouTube video. I'm watching... Um, I'm watching, what's his name? Webb Simpson just dominates the players' tournament. He's just dominating up by like seven strokes. I'm loving it. And then I hear, I hear from, the, from the kitchen, honey. I'm like, that, that, that don't sound right. That don't sound right. She, she shouldn't need me for any part of what's going on in there. She shouldn't need me. So, honey, it's almost ready, but we're out of syrup. You know what that means? That means I have to get up and I have to go down to the, the little Woodbridge market and spend four dollars on a little bottle of syrup. That's that is the root of all evil right there. I hate running out of stuff. I just absolutely hate running out of stuff. You know what else I hate sometimes? I hate having too much of stuff when it's like right around here, when I've been having a little too much mac and chili. I like too much. Too much doesn't get a whole lot of hate though. Most people aren't, aren't tripping out about having too much of anything, but mostly it's, mostly it's running out. Isn't that right, honey? Yeah, yeah it is. It is. <laughs> Today's message is, is really about being content. It's about being content in, in any and all situations. No matter if I got, no matter if I ran out of peanut butter, I'm being, I'm being a little facetious. If I ran out of peanut butter, if I ran out of milk, if I ran out of syrup, or if I'm running out of money, or if I lost that job, or if I lost something even more. How, how possibly, how possibly could I be, learn to be content in that? How could I be content in that? So let's start. Philippians 4. Hope you're there. We're going to start it in verse 10. What I want to tell you about this, this verse, I'm going to start reading it here in a second, but this is Paul writing to God's people in Philippi. Okay, so let's go. Uh, Apostle Paul is writing, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. Let me give you some back, back story here with what's going on with Paul. Paul is an apostle. That means he travels all over the place and he plants churches in the cities, he, in the cities that he goes to, that he travels to. He started this church and now he's, he's writing them back saying, hey, you know, you were concerned for me because you wanted to support me. He's talking about money. He's talking, you sent me some money because I'm, I'm starting all these churches out here and I'm just roaming. I got a job on the side making tents, but you really helped me out because every dollar you send, 
is a, an hour that I don't have to spend making tents that I can use building churches. You understand what I'm saying? So he was thankful. He was thankful that, that even though it took them a while, I don't know why it took them so long, but he's, he's, he's talking about that. It took you a while to send me this gift, but I'm, I'm glad you renewed your concern for me. But what else you need to know about um, the, the place, Philippi, the city, is surrounded on three sides by mountains, and then it looks, it looks down into, the, into a, a valley. So imagine a city that's pretty much surrounded by, by mountains and hills and stuff, and then it goes down into a valley. But what most people don't know about the city of Philippi is that it's known for its rich gold deposits. It's like California, 1949, gold deposits. Philippi is balling. They got gold. They're sitting on a gold mine. They've got gold. They're not hurting for anything. They're not in, as the, uh, some translations say, they're not in want. They're not in a place of wanting. They're in a place of plenty. So that's something I want you to remember for later. Okay, remember for later, Philippi has gold. They, they, got, they got gold, all right? Just that's all I'm going to say about that. Verse 11, I am not saying this because I am in need. Oh, no, no, no. For I have learned, everybody say learned. learned. I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. You know, you know why that's encouraging for us today? Is because even this crazy guy, Paul, even this guy who wrote two-thirds of our New Testament, he had to learn to be content. That means being content is not something you're born with. It's not something that just comes naturally. No, if, if he had to learn, by God, I have to learn. By God, we have to learn to be content. It's something that we have to practice. Yeah. Something that we have to practice being content. I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Verse 12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret. Everybody say secret. secret. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed, and he's talking about some filet mignon, not no chili mac, okay? Well-fed. I've learned to be content, well-fed. Well, that's not very hard. Or hungry, going hungry. Here I am planting all these churches, man, all these people's faith. I'm responsible for all these people's faith. How, they're leaving me hanging, man. Man, how, how come I'm going hungry here? All these children of God, I'm responsible for them. No, 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 no. He said, I've learned. I'm content. He's learned to be content. It's a good thing you came to church today. Man, we're about to learn some good things up in church today. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Plenty or in want. You want to know? You want to know? You want to know how? You want to know how to be content, whether in plenty or in want? You want to know how to be content, whether you have it all or whether you're striving to have it? You want to know how to be content, whether you got the best job or whether you lost the best job? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Yes. It's a secret. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. It's a secret. Paul had to learn it on his own. I've learned the the secrets, the secret of being content in any and every situation. Now, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of harsh, man. I thought you wrote this letter to, like, teach us something, Paul. Paul, you're leaving us hanging. 2018, man. We are hurting for some, for some being content. <laughs> Up in the American church today, we're hurting to know the secret of being content. Now, what, this is something I want to teach you. Let me, let me, switch, in, let me switch gears ba -ba -bom, into a little, teaching, a little teaching moment, okay? Track with me here. I want to I show you some Greek. Now, this, this, this term, secret, it's actually the one word is for three words in English. This one Greek word, I have to actually look at it. Meweo means learned the secret. It's... That's they translated, learned the secret. Meweo, learned the secret. Meweo, learned the secret. You know what it means? It means, it means to learn by doing. To learn by discovery. 
Actually, what, what my little dictionary, my little Greek dictionary, is said, to learn by initiation. To learn by initiation. Meweo, I've learned the secret. By, by being in it, I have learned how to go through it. I've learned how it works to be content in any and every situation because I have been in want, and I have been in plenty, and I have learned because I've been through it. It's like my watch right here. It's like this. This is what, this is what we're really talking about. Paul said, I have learned the secrets of this watch because I opened it up, and I looked, and I saw that there's little gears clicking around in there. And I, I noticed that the power source is coming from this little tiny battery. I have made way, I've learned the secret because I opened it up. I got a better illustration. I got a better illustration. Where's that microphone at? That one you use there? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Whew, hiding right there. I have learned the secret, Paul said, to how this microphone works. Because I bet you didn't know you could do this. Because I've been inside it. I've been inside of this. And I can see, oh, because now that I can see, now that I've been inside, I can see there's a little diaphragm in there that goes whenever I put my, whenever I put my lips next to it and I start talking, it makes it vibrate and then it, it transmits it over there and then it transmits it out there. And I've learned the secrets. I've learned the secrets of the microphone because I've, I've been in it. Because I've been in it. I don't, I don't want to mess anybody up later. I better tighten that down. I've learned the secrets. I've learned the secret. He's saying it like this. Forgive me, my, uh, my illustration people were on a sabbatical, so I had to make these myself. Please, people, I'm just trying to show you. I, I know the secret to being in plenty or being in want because I've been inside it. I know what it looks like in there. I know where the corners are. I know what it feels like in here. It's kind of dark, actually, in plenty. It's kind of dark, but I've been inside it, so now I know. I know what it is to be in want because I've been in here and I know what it feels like and I know what it seems like. Some of you, some of you know what it feels like to be either in plenty or in want. Some of you know both. You want to know the answer? Do you want to know the secret? I'm ready to tell you the secret now. Verse 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. You ever heard, you ever heard that one? You ever heard that verse? Picture of a guy, you know, floating to Stockton on balloons. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You want to know what the secret is? The secret is the source. The secret is the source. I've learned what it means. I've learned how to be content whether I lost my job, whether I got a job, whether she left me or whether I'm, I'm doing fine, whether I got the raise or whether I got demoted, I have learned the secret because I can do all that because he's my source. He's the one that supplies me. It's not her who supplies me. It's not him who supplies me. It doesn't come from my paycheck. It doesn't come from my boss. It doesn't come from the economy. It doesn't come from this church. It doesn't even come from each other. It comes from him. Amen. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Amen. That's the secret. It's a, but it's a shh. It's a secret, though. Not everybody knows it. Not everybody knows it. Most people want this verse just to mean, well, oh, I had a buddy. Okay. I don't think he's watching, so I can tell this story, and he probably won't remember this as much as I will. But I remember this guy wanted to learn guitar from me, and I was, it was back when I was still visiting the Salvation Army on a regular basis, and I was working with men there, and men were getting saved, and men were getting excited, and, you know, I was just, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty tigger of a guy and so they're like hey cool you know must be must be cool to be a christian let's do this and this guy wanted to learn guitar you know but he was i was working with him and he was i was like dang you ever thought about like playing the harmonica for real man and he, you know he said to me well i can do all things through christ will give me strength i was like man you can do most things through christ will give me made me check my theology for a second. I'm like, I don't think that's what it means because that's not working out, man. Jeez. And he, he was dead. He was, I can do all things. Through Christ, you give me strength. I'm like, all things? Really? Man, well, start with this, I guess. I guess I can do all this through him who gives me 
of strength. The secret is Jesus is your source. And you've got you to gotta make him your source. Paul said he learned the secret. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn to make him your source. And that means sometimes when you're right here, when you're living in this box right here, you gotta say, it's all right, he's my source. It's all right. I gotta train myself. I gotta believe in my heart and know that he's my source no matter if I'm wanting or not. Oh, you know what's even tougher though? Is this one. Oh, this one's tougher right here. Because when you're living in this box right here, and I don't preach against being wealthy, I don't. I don't. I believe God wants you to be wealthy. I believe God wants to prosper you. I really do. But it can be a real challenge sometimes when you're living here to learn to make him your source. He's my source. Because the more people throw themselves off a building for losing this than for losing that one. Right? Because, because everything looked good, but their source was, the substance was the source. Not the source being the substance. Oh, that was way too deep. Let me, let me start over. That was way too deep. That was way too much. If you, put, if you put your source in anything else, it will leave you discontent. You, you may, it may fool you for a while. You can, put, you can put your source in her. You can put your source in him. You can put your source in that job. You can put your source in that substance. You can put your source in whatever you'd like. But if you put your source in anything else other than Jesus... It's going to leave you hanging. It's going to leave you hanging. And in the darkest moment, it's going to go, whoop, it's going to pull the rug out right from under your feet. But if you learn the secret, if you learn the secret of making Jesus your source, whether in want or in plenty, nothing can affect you. You're untouchable. You're untouchable. Man, what, what I wouldn't do to just have it just like that. But you know what? We got to learn it. We got to learn this secret. We've got to learn this secret. You know what? The absolute truth is this, and I know that's like a cuss word in today's day and age. The absolute truth is God is the source. Whether you see him that way or not is really up to you. I mean, that, you, can, you can choose to see it however you want, but the truth is that God created this universe, us, everything in it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's what the word says. And that's, if, you just, if you just play the tape out in your mind, it's not that hard to understand. We are created. This world is created. The absolute truth is he's the source. He created it all anyways. The trick is, is just believing that in our day-to-day, -day, that Money can come literally from anywhere. That if bread can fall from the sky like it did for the Israelites when they were going through the day, bread grrr, falling from the sky. If, if we believe that food and water and shelter and our basic needs can be met no matter what happens in this economy, no matter what happens, if we believe that God is our true source, how untouchable will you really become? But, but, if you're trained over a lifetime, if you're trained to look at your boss or mostly your work or that paycheck or that income as your source, we're all trained to do that. We're all trained to do that, to, to give that priority. If, we're, if we do that, leave us wanting. It'll leave us wanting, not living in want and contentment, but leaving us discontent. Even if we get more and more and more and more, we'll be discontent all the way to the very top. And then you'll find yourself at the top of the ladder, at the top of the chain, boss of everybody, discontent. Man, what did I miss? What have I missed? I've seen this a lot in, in, in the way the Lord rescued me from addiction. And I, I've seen a lot of men, especially uh, get clean, get saved, and then they start doing really well because a lot of addicts and, and alcoholics, that's where I come from, a lot, of these, a lot of these men and women are extremely smart. They're extremely bright people. There was just this flip 
switch up there that, that, that shifted it over here. But there's, there's so much brightness there that once they get clean, once they get sober, they really start taking off in life. And they've got gifts, and they know how to talk to people, and they know how to, you know, do the deal and the dance. They know what to do. And I see them walk all the way up, all the way up, and then somewhere along the line. Because in the beginning, when they were, I, I keep losing my boxes. I keep throwing them. When they were here, it was easy to look at Jesus as the source. But when you start to live over here, when you start to grow, and you start to get over here in plenty, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher to make Jesus your source. So I would encourage every single one of you, shift your perspective. Make him your source. Is there a test? Is there a way that we can, is there a concrete way, pastor, that we can just do something that, that will get us to this place? Yeah, yeah. And some of you ain't gonna like it. It's the tithe. It's the tithe. That's, I'm, that's, I'm not here to talk about just that today, but there is one thing that comes up over and over and over and over again about the biggest area of most of our discontentment, money. There's one thing. It's the tithe. And it's 10% of your income, every single paycheck. And you know what? You know what the thing is about 10%? For one, it's fair no matter how much. So you can be in plentier and plentier and plentier and plentier. And it's still just 10. It's still just 10%. But you know what else? It's just enough to hurt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care how much you make. It hurts a little bit. If you're only making $1,000 a month, 100 is a lot of it. <laughs> right? But if you're making $10,000 a month, ooh, that's even more of it. Right? It's just enough. You know the number 10 in scripture actually means test? When you see that number, it actually represents testing in the Bible. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? That we can actually put ourselves to the test. Am I content? When, I, when we do this, when we actually say, all right, and that, that sting, that pain of losing that, it's just enough to hurt, man. It's just enough. But when we put that out there, it's just enough to teach our own heart this is, this is not my source. This is not my source. It's just enough to teach yourself out of this money is not my source. This job is not my source. My boss is not my source. The economy is not my source. The stock market is not my source. Because no matter what, it all comes from him. And he can give it to me any old way he sees fit. So why am I even worried about it? It's just enough. Just enough. I'll talk about tithing more some other time. That's not really the... The issue today, the, the issue today is the source and learning the secrets of being content in every situation. Now, remember the gold. Remember? Remember Philippi had gold? Remember I said that? Yeah, yeah. They're sitting over there, and they got, like, gold right under their feet, and it's like, they're, they get it rain left and right. They're like, what do I care? I got gold. I'm sitting on it. It's great. They got gold. But this is what I think. Now, would you allow me to give you my opinion about something? I know I'm standing on the platform and I'm extra tall today and it's like I'm supposed to be just nothing but truth. But I feel like giving you my opinion about something because I read this chapter in this book like over and over and over and over again. It's only four chapters, so it's not I sounded more holy than I was right there for a second. But I read it over and over and over again and I started to get this feeling. It's just a feeling that Paul was writing to them for a certain reason that maybe, just maybe, these Philippians had begun to make their source not God, but the gold. They had begun to shift their thinking. See, he talked to them nice and gentle. I knew you cared for me, but at last, at last it came. I see what's going on here. Paul said, I've seen it before. Matter of fact, I've lived in it. I've been in plenty. I know what it's like to sit on a gold mine. I also know what it's like to be eating ramen with chili in it for dinner four nights a week. That was a little bit of, did you hear the resentment in my voice right there? <laughs> Paul said, I, I know what it's like, and I think I know what's going on here. You, you've begun to shift your source. Instead of prioritizing, you know, me, your pastor, and the church, and God, you, you've begun to shift, haven't you? You've begun to shift, and you started, where, what began when you started this journey as God is my source, 
He, you know, he saved me. He rescued me. I'm crying during worship. Oh, hallelujah. And it's all good. But as time goes by and I get better and better at this, you know, I got this. I got this. Oh, Paul, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to you in just a second, Paul. I got I to gotta get my portfolio together. Hold on. Hold on, Paul. Paul said, oh, <laughs> hold on. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. They're, 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 it shifted. It shifted. Because they didn't know the secret. They were walking in harmony with God's heart, making him the source, but they didn't know the secret. So when it shifted, the secret became a mystery. And they didn't know what was even happening in their very own lives right now. They didn't know. They didn't see it happening. They got a raise, and everything changed in their head. Everything shifted. Let's read this. I think, I think the answer is in that same chapter, starting in verse 18, Philippians 4, 18. He said this. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from the gifts you sent. Somebody, please. That is a crazy name. I don't care who you are, where you're from. They are a fragrant offering. I've received the gift from you. That's a fragrant offering and an acceptable sacrifice. An acceptable sacrifice. Pleasing to God. And in this context, he says this, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory. Not that's what you're sitting on. Not that gold mine you think you're sitting on. Did you know his streets are made of gold? He's got way more gold than you. So what happened to you? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Now that you sent this gift, my God will meet all your needs according to his riches. Man, you don't even got to bother with your own riches now. He's got riches you can't even count. He's got riches you can't even count. If we could just learn the secret, that breaking the spirit inside of us of discontentment comes from going, all right, here you go. You can have it. Fine. Just take it. I believe in you, God. Just here, fine, take it. I've been holding off. I've been waiting. I've been focused on myself. I've been focused on taking care of my own needs. i got to take care of my family, God. You think you can take care of them better than I can? Come on. Come on. Really? It's got to start with where, where do you really believe the source is? Are you the source? A lot of you say no, but act yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. God's good and all. I got to do what I got to do. You know, I got, God would understand. God does understand. He understands that something's off in your head. That you forgot he created the whole universe. Why are you trying to take? He'll let you take care of yourself. And that should scare you. Yeah. Scares me. I've tried it. But I'm bad at it. Let me just tell you bluntly. I'm bad at it. Real bad. Epically bad. Front page bad. Tried to take care of myself and meet my own needs. Bad. Ugh, I don't even want to talk about it. He meets needs. He meets needs. And if you want to shift your perspective to know that he meets those needs, you need to learn to give like he's the source, not like you're the source. Give like he's the source. This is what I want to encourage you with today. Let go of false control. Let go of the false control that you've trained yourself, the world has trained you, that you think you have. You don't have it. You don't have it. This is not my opinion. I've shifted from my opinion to what I know is true. You don't have control, not as much control as you think you do. He has control. Let go of that false control. You, you being the source, your boss being the source, your job being the source, the economy being the source, those are not sources. That is substance. God will send those things to provide for you, but they're not the ones providing for you. Those are just substance. Those are means of his provision. It'd be like worshiping the bread as it came down if we are in the desert on our way to the promised land saying, oh, holy bread. What? God's up there like, what? How could you? What's it? But you? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with these people. I don't know how, how often I could keep on taking care of them and keep on sending them miracle after miracle, just saving them, securing them. They didn't even know how that, how that bill got paid. 
They didn't know that person was going to come in their life at just the right moment. How much do I have to do to prove to these people that I'll take care of them? How much does he have to do? I'm, I'm willing to bet he's done enough already. It's time for us to just shift. Shift. And learn the secret of being content in any and every situation. He is the source. Try it. Learn the secret. Learn the secret. You know what else? It's not, it's not just money, folks. It's that, it's that attachment to the people and the things of our life. And we think they're the source of our joy, our, our strength, our hope. We've got to learn to shift. And you know where it starts? It starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. It starts with just meeting him, encountering him in a worship service, encountering him it, when, when uh, somebody's speaking and you hear something and it just resonates in your heart. It starts with a relationship. Maybe you're by yourself reading or praying or doing something, anything. Maybe you're at work or you had a loss or something happened to you and you just knew that God was with you in that moment to say, okay, God, ah, here I am. I envy you if you're in a place of want. Because it's easy to make him your source right there. It's also easier to maintain that perspective through your growth. So I encourage you today, whether you're in a place of want, or whether you're in a place of plenty, I encourage you to make God your source. Make him the source of love in your life. Let's stop depending on people to meet our love needs. Let's stop depending on the economy to meet our financial needs. Let's stop Let's stop leaning on images to meet our love needs. Let's stop leaning on substance to meet our detachment needs. Let's learn today that God is the one and only true source in our lives. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes today. Father, I know you're speaking a powerful word to somebody today. I know that you're, you're speaking directly into a situation I'm not even aware of. And Lord, I thank you that I've spoken a bunch of words, but you are talking directly to our hearts today. And you have something to say to each and every individual sitting within the, 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 the hearing of my voice. Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do in some hearts today. Lord, I thank you and we praise you. Lord, it's, it's time right now. I feel like some of us here need to make a decision. We need to make a decision for you. It's time to quit running 